Ultimately, for all the work that we do in the brewery, it is the person at the bar who is serving the pint of beer who is the final point of contact with the customer. My name's Roger Ryman, I'm brewing director at St Austin Brewery. Um, I'm currently sitting in the Seven Stars Inn. Uh, this is, was a, Walter Hicks's original pub. The company goes back to 1851. It was uh, founded by a, a gentleman called Walter Hicks, a Cornishman. Um, in 1851, he, he mortgaged his farm and he, he set himself up in business and uh, actually opened his, his first pub. The company continued to grow and uh, he moved to the current brewery in 1893, which is where we still brew all of the beers today. If you want to make beer, you only need, you only need four ingredients. That's water, barley, hops and yeast. And it's one of the great things with beer, actually, is that there's so much diversity from only four raw materials. Uh, right, where we are right now, this is the mill room, so this is the start of the brewing process. This is right at the top of the brewery tower. So the first thing we have to do before we can brew with our malted barley is we have to mill it. Milling it basically just involves cracking the corn, opening it up, um, so that when we mash it in the next stage, the water or the liquor can access the inside of the grain to extract the sugar. Inside each corn, corn of barley, there is, there is starch and we need to access that starch and break that starch down to make sugar. Before the, the barley can come, come to the brewery to be used for, for brewing beer, it has to be malted. Malting basically liberates the, the sugars within the barley. So the barley, when it's harvested from the farm, is full of starch. The malt is the, the heart and soul of the beer. So we get, get, can get uh, sweet, toffee, caramel, nutty, roasted flavours that come from using the different types of malt. Well, this is our brew house. So um, each batch of beer, we brew roughly 175 brewers barrels on a brew. So in language that most people understand, that's around about 55,000 pints of beer. So that is one single batch of beer. That takes 4.3 tonnes of malted barley. And we have to mix that crushed malted barley with hot water, or as brewers say, hot liquor. Um, in this vessel, the mash tun, and it's here where we're actually going to infuse and extract the sugar out of the barley. Each brew takes around about eight hours from raw material from the barley through to the finished wort and fermentation. It then takes a further seven days to ferment. In each 24-hour period, we make three different brews in this brew house, so we can make um, over 150,000 pints of beer every 24-hour period. The mash comes out looking like a thick porridge. It falls into this vessel and it rests in here for 60 minutes. And during that time, from the barley, we infuse and extract all of the sugar and the colour and the flavour that's going to go into our final beer. So we add the hops in here. We bring the wort to the boil and we boil it for an hour and 15 minutes. And during this process, we are purging off raw aromas from the grain, we're extracting the flavour out of the hops and importantly we're also sterilising the wort. Historically over the years brewers have, have flavoured beers with all, all sorts of botanicals and if you look through historical brewing records back into medieval times um, they used to produce beers called Groot and Groot was flavoured with all sorts of um, herbs, spices and, and different botanicals. It's a great thing to research some of these ancient brewing recipes and to try and re recreate some of these beers. Um, we have looked at different spices in brewing beer over the, over the years. Uh, we've brewed with licorice, we've brewed with um, there's a, there's a spice called Grains of Paradise, we've brewed with orange peel, with all sorts of things. We've brewed with chocolate, chilli chocolate, we made a stout with chilli chocolate. Um, we made a strawberry lager, we've, uh, we've made honey beers, we've brewed with honey. Coffee beans, we made a stout with coffee beans. Well, this is a fermentation room. It takes us eight hours to brew each batch of beer, but then it takes a further seven days to ferment. So each one of these vessels will hold one brew of beer from the brew house. So we have... I've lost count of how many vessels we've got. Let me think, one, two, three, four, five, 18 different fermentation vessels. This is over 100 years old. We've got one down here that's even older. Yeah, we've got a real mix of, um, of, of, of old and new in here. The vessel behind me is around about 1912. It's made out of cowrie pine, which is New Zealand pine. And traditionally, this was a material of construction for, for, for brewery vessels back in those days, because what they were trying to get was long lengths of timber without knots in the wood, for hygiene reasons. At this point in the process, hygiene becomes absolutely critical. 
we add the yeast and during that time the yeast will feed on the sugars, converting the sugars into alcohol. There's hundreds of different types of yeast. I mean, uh, there's, there's probably as many uh, different types of yeast as there are people on the planet, to be perfectly honest. Ales are what we call top fermenting. So during the fermentation, the yeast will rise to the surface and we will skim the yeast from the surface of the brew. Historically, that was done with this sluice gate here. So they would actually open, raise and lower this to the surface of the beer and then just paddle the surface yeast away from the beer over this sluice gate. Lagers are bottom fermenting, so during the fermentation, the yeast will drop to the bottom of the vessel. We've been brewing beer here for 160 years, but we've never brewed lager before. And it's, it's something that I've been playing around with over 10 years. And I think part of it really was um, as much the technical challenge. I wanted to know that I could. You know, I've been an ale brewer for many years, but um, brewing, a, brewing a really good premium, high quality lager was one challenge that I hadn't really taken on. And the techniques are a little bit different. Lagers have to be a very, very delicate. Any, um, any flavor deviation is immediately apparent, so you've got to be technically very, very proficient. You're also working at lower temperatures, which means that the yeast can be a little bit more temperamental. But I've been delighted with Korev and the, the success of it. It's been launched for just, uh, just over 12 months and it's been a, a phenomenal success for us. And I think the time is right for good quality, locally produced lagers with um, great flavour and real local values. Yeah, so cask conditioned beer is really beer in its, its most natural and um, unadulterated form. So cask conditioned beer spends seven days in the fermentation vessels and then it's pumped from the fermentation vessels to a what we call a racking tank, it's simply a holding tank, and then from there we fill it directly into the casks. Brewing is 90% cleaning, 90% hygiene, and um, if you haven't got the cleaning and the hygiene right, the rest of it is not going to work. So, so once the beer leaves the brewery, it's vitally important that um, the beer is kept in, a, in hygienic conditions, in a hygienic cellar, and dispensed through clean, regularly cleaned beer lines. And we recommend to every licensee they should clean their beer lines a minimum of once per week. So it is a fresh food product and like all fresh food products it tastes great when it's fresh but clearly fresh food can stale so it's really important that we keep turnover with beer, we keep it moving. In the pub a single cask of beer should take no more than two to three days to sell. The bottling line was installed in 2009. Bottled beer is a big growth part of our business. Having control of our own our own process, our own quality means that uh, our, our bottled beer is, is better than it's ever been and the awards that it, it's won really, really reflect that. We've recently introduced a Seven Star Promise because this is because we believe that if customers quite rightly are paying good money to buy a pint of beer, it should be perfect. The beer that I'm really excited about actually is Korev. I think the great thing about Korev is it's a new category Tribute is a great cask conditioned beer, but now we've got a great lager as well. So actually it's a whole new category and uh, Korev I think is just at the start of a great journey. We actually had to ration it um, in the springtime last year, shortly after we launched it, because uh, we were so astounded with the, with the demand that we simply hadn't brewed enough of it. So uh, Trelawney is a, um, it's an amber ale, a bit of caramel and toffee and uh, it's quite a delicious beer and really drinkable. HSD is um, probably one of our most classic beers. It's got a really nice deep copper, tawny brown colour to it. It's um, characterised by malt, so we've got really nice crystal, caramel, toffee, nutty flavours coming through in the beer. Admiral's Ale certainly in 2008 was uh, awarded the Supreme Champion at uh, the International Beer Competition. Um, so that was the champion of champions, which was you know, phenomenal. Yeah, Proper Job's uh, a slightly drier palate than, than other beers. It's slightly more bitter, but it has a really big, distinctive, fruity hop flavour. When I joined the brewery, we were producing roughly um, you know, 15, 16,000 barrels of beer a year. My ambition was to get the brewery up to 25,000 barrels of beer. Uh, we've just brewed 80,000 barrels of beer a year. Even in my wildest dreams, I would have anticipated the, the degree of success that we've had. Some of our other beers, proper job, are actually exported. So uh, uh, there is a bar in Perth, Australia, where you can, where you can drink proper job. Serving great beer is a partnership between brewery and pub. 
I spend a lot of time coming into pubs and enjoying great beer, but it'd be really good to see people coming into the brewery to see how it's made, find out the stories, find out how we go to so much hard work to make sure that the beer that you receive in the pub is in tip-top condition so that we can work together to serve the perfect pint.